You want to support Roller March Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to RollerMartinUnfiltered.com. You can make this possible. All right, folks, uh, an amazing story out of Louisiana. Elvis Brooks, he walked out of the infamous Louisiana State Penitentiary uh, known as Angola uh, today after serving time for 42 years, his entire adult life. He says for a crime he did not commit. Now, um, the Innocence Project, they found evidence that prosecutors withheld information showing that Brooks' fingerprints did not match those found at the scene, as well as other irregularities. Uh, But he agreed to a lesser charge of armed robbery. Prosecutors said he had already served 42 years in prison, so therefore he should be released. They contend he did commit the crime. He said he did not want to have to admit to this, uh, but he wanted to be able to get out and live a life. I want to start with you, Amisha. I mean, this is... I mean, this is unbelievable. This man has maintained that he did not commit this crime for 42 years. He went in at the age of 20, the age of 20, gets out now. He's 62 years old, uh, and, uh, and, and he said he was left with no choice. He had to actually, uh, you know, plead guilty in order to get out. He said at that point, uh, I, just, I just wanted to be free. I'm disgusted by this. I'm disgusted by this story in general. One, because we know that in Louisiana, we've had over 20 cases that have been overturned under the exact same circumstances of someone who said that they saw somebody. This is supposedly eyewitness testimony that has been proven faulty across the United States um, years ago when even when they looked for actual DNA evidence, nothing actually confirmed that this man was at, at, at the place, that he had any, um, I- any evidence of his actually committing the crime whatsoever. So I feel like in this case, you have someone who's literally spent their entire adult life. I can't imagine all the changes that happened in 40 plus years that he's been left out of. And to just get a taste of freedom in one of America's most tough prisons in the entire country, um, in, the, in, in the entire globe in many cases, it him being able to and actually saying that, okay, well, I'm going to admit to this crime because he, all of his attorneys and everyone who he's dealt with thus far was right. not able to get him off, even though there was no physical evidence pointing to him actually being gr- guilty of this crime. He wanted to have a breath of fresh air. He wanted to be like everyone else. And I think that after serving that long, it does not not make sense that he would. It's dismantling and it's disturbing to me as someone who's worked in criminal justice reform for a very long time that we still see cases like this where you have people who have spent decades behind bars for crimes that could be completely exonerated by simple DNA evidence. There is nothing placing this man at the scene of the crime except some Caucasian individuals who say that they saw him. The same people who in many cases we've seen get completely dismantled. Deontay, what's troubling here is that the Innocence Project uncovered where where prosecutors withheld the evidence showing that it was not this man's fingerprints that were found at the at, at the scene. And the problem here, the state was going to continue to fight this. He could have spent another three, four, or five years in prison trying to prove his innocence. And he said, I'm 62. I don't know how much time I got left. And so he was forced to admit to a crime, even though the prosecutors uh, had wrongdoing on their side. You know, Roland, this is, this reminds me, and every time we see stories like this, it just reminds us how important criminal justice reform is. Um, Our criminal justice system needs to be repaired. it's, It's broken. It needs to be repaired. And we must come together, both Republicans and Democrats, come together to fix it. We need to figure out, you know, there are so many stories just like this, and this is just one that has been highlighted, but there are so many stories like this around the country, um, stories where I had own family members who have been in jail all of their life, they are close to getting out, and then somehow they magically die or they magically something happens to them. And so we have to talk about not just the release, but the treatment that is had inside of the uh, inside of these penitentiaries, but also what is it we can do to make sure that they are getting the proper treatment with health, but also that the, that their families are able to still communicate with them and still have time with them as well because 62 years being 62 years old and having to make the decision it's a tough decision and i'm sure um you know he's like i gotta do what i gotta do to get out 
Uh, Kelly, um, th- what happened was that was an armed robbery. A customer was re- killed uh, in that armed robbery. That's what uh, he was convicted of. Um, but again, if, if you if, to put the thing in perspective, this is a cinch. That man served 42 years, and we talked about Amber Geiger. She's going to serve 10 years for killing both of them, John. So he has served four times longer in the sentence she got. And she may get out, actually, after four or five years. But for 42 years, maintaining your innocence, and it pained him to have to admit to guilt, he said, but I wanted to walk free. I wanted to get out of this prison. If there was ever a time where um, a court, meaning the judge and prosecutors, should be hugging a defendant, it would be this case. They should be the ones asking for forgiveness for, from this man here, because he he's completely innocent. Um, the Innocence Project uh, does their best to find um, people in the system who really can be proven that they are innocent, and he's one of those people. So the fact that, you know, he... It, it's likely that he could have been... Uh, the charges could have been clear in five years, but again, he's 62. I completely understand why he would take a deal that would basically say time served, you know, you can live the rest of your life outside of a jail cell. Um, but right. like my colleagues were saying earlier, this is absolutely disgusting. Um, and the fact that, you know, Amber Geiger is only getting 10 years and we really know that's going to be no, no more than five, considering that she has parole, it, it, it is disgusting. And, you know, I know everybody keeps going back to the hugging and stuff that happened in the courtroom. I definitely disagreed with it. I have my own thoughts on that. But if there was ever a time for a court to, you know, combine church and state this one time, it would be in this case. And you know that's not going to happen because he's not blonde hair, blue eyed, and a woman crying crocodile tears. All right, folks, back to that whole Mark Unfiltered video in just one moment. Lifelock Jazz Experience taking place in Cabo, November 7th through the 11th. Of course, if you want to attend, uh, go to lifeluxjazz.com, L-I-F-E-L-U-X-E-J-A-Z-Z.com. But if you cannot be in Cabo for those four days, 14 different uh, amazing artists, then, of course, you could live stream it. Get, get your live stream pass at gfntv.com. That's gfntv.com. As I said, amazing artists. Gerald Albright, Alex Bunyong, Kirk Whalum, Donna McClurkin, uh, Shalia, Roy Ayers. Uh, man, it's going to be an unbelievable uh, three-day extravaganza. And so uh, look forward to you participating. And again, get your live streaming pass. To cover those three days, all 14 concerts, you'll be able to watch right here on your phone, on your uh, iPad computer. Does not matter. Go to gfntv.com. That's gfntv.com to get your live stream pass. Now back to your Roland Martin Unfiltered video. 